God sent his son, they call him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds a future. And life is worth the living just because he lives how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know he holds a future and life is worth the living just because he lives and then one day I'll cross the river and fight life's fight no war with pain and then as death Gives way to victory. I'll see the light of glory and I'll know He lives. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds a future And life is worth the living just because he lives Amen, Amen. Take the Lord in prayer Dear Heavenly Father, I'm, I'm going to bring this prayer request up to the Lord Whoever needs your Lord, just bring them to you um, as they need your healing, Lord, um, and their salvation needs to be healed by your grace and mercy, Lord. Um, and thank you for what you're going to do tonight, Lord. As Pastor preaches your word, touch everyone's heart at with this message, Lord. As I turn this floor over to Pastor tonight, Lord, let him give it to your Holy Spirit, Lord. I say, need your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, grab your Bibles tonight. Go back with me to the book of Hebrews. And uh, we're going to look at Hebrews 14 and through verse number 18. And the subject we're going to look at tonight is Christ secures uh, the victory for man. Um, I've, it's very short what I've got tonight, but I've got a lot of scripture verses. I only have two points, but it's, uh, it's, it's what's in between those two points. Uh, so Hebrews chapter 2, uh, starting in verse number 14, if you found your place, say amen. amen. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that hath the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Amen? 
And uh, where are we at? Verse number seven, 16. For verily, uh, for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sin of the people. For in, in that he, he himself has suffered being tempted, as he is able uh, to succor them that are tempted. Amen. So that brings us to the end of the chapter. Uh, we're going to look at tonight that Christ secures the victory of man. And I'm thankful he does. Amen. Uh, that he secures that. My, my, my secure is in Christ. Amen. It's not in myself. It's not in the church. It is in Christ and Christ alone, not in the Pope. Uh, it's not in the government. Amen for that. And uh, it, it's not, not in my paycheck or anything like that. All of those things are a blessing and they help. But my security is in Christ. And Christ secures the victory for man. So let's go ahead and pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you again tonight. We do come in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, Lord. Because neither is our salvation given to any man, any other name, but that the name of Christ, Lord. We do thank you for the victory that we have. But God, I pray tonight, if there's anyone here tonight that's just, they're just not with it tonight, I just pray that you'll soften their heart tonight, Lord. God, you'll loosen the bands as uh, as, uh, as they listen to the Word of God, that when they walk away from here, they'll, they'll know they met with you. And, and, Lord, may they get something tonight. And, Lord, we just pray for those maybe that are just, uh, uh, just not feeling well tonight. We do pray for them. Lord, bless us all here tonight as we look into your Word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, again, Christ secures the victory for man. I'm going to go ahead and jump into it tonight because I've got a lot of verses to to give you tonight. So point number one is this. Uh, Christ became man's great deliverer. Amen. So in verse number 14 uh, through verse number 16, we see that for as much then, the Bible says, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. Are we not partakers of flesh and blood? Are we not? I mean, if we live in this body, then we are partakers every bit of this flesh. Huh? And, and this flesh, if we're not careful, we'll, we'll, we'll let this flesh control our thoughts. We'll let this flesh control our actions. We'll let this flesh control uh, our very being. Amen? And then the blood, right? Every one of us, we all bleed red. We, we hear the songs about that. We've heard stories about that. We all bleed red, right? But not every one of us has the same DNA in our blood, right? And uh, we all have a different blood, a different bloodline, amen? We, we look into genealogy and we look at our bloodline, right? And, and, but we are partakers of flesh and blood. The Bible said he also himself likewise took part of the same. Was Christ also uh, 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 100% man as he was 100% God? Right. I mean, the Lord, the Bible said that he was tempted in all points as we are, right? He, he, he had to uh, endure temptation. He had to suffer persecution. He knew what it was to weep in John chapter 11, verse 35. He knew what pain was. Amen. Even though the Bible says that he opened not his mouth, but he knew what pain was. He understood agony, for he cried on the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He understood what it was to be lonely, to be separated from his father when for three hours there was darkness. Uh, he understood what it was to not have a place to lay his head. He was tired, wasn't he? A few times in the scriptures where he just wanted to sleep. We go to Matthew chapter number 9 and the Bible said he was just trying to get home. He understood what it was to, for the virtue to leave him. When the woman with the issue of blood 12 years touched the hem of his garment. 
So again, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That the Bible says that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. And the Bible says that's the devil, right? You know, the Bible said he didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. But what he came to do was destroy the devil. And I'm thankful for that. And look here, and the Bible says, And deliver them who, who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. So letter A, let's jump right into it. He delivered man by willingly becoming a man. First part of verse number 14, again, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. We find the book of Isaiah chapter 7, verse number 14, how Isaiah prophesied, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah 9, verse number 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. The Bible says the Prince of Peace. Amen. See, he, he delivered man by willingly becoming a man. And then we get to the New Testament of Luke 1, verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Amen. John chapter 1, verse number 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Paul says in Romans 8, verse number 3, For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh... God sent His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned fle sin in the flesh. See, Paul was saying here in Romans 8, verse number 3, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. You see, once a year, uh, the, the high priest would go into the temple in and, and the Day of Atonement, and he himself, the, the high priest himself, was, was a sinner, uh, had, had iniquity in his heart. And the Bible said he had to make sure he was right with God before he can go before the presence of God. But Christ, God sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. 1 Timothy 3, verse 16. And, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on, the, on in the world, and received up into glory. See, Christ became man's greatest deliverer. Because letter A, he delivered man by willingly becoming a man. Letter B, he delivered man by dying for all mankind. All mankind. I've said this before and I continue to say, as, as long as God gives me breath, I can never be a Calvinist. Because the Bible doesn't teach that. How many here tonight? A Calvinist. A Calvin, the, 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 the belief of Calvinism is, is it all started with a, with a Catholic priest by the name of John Calvin. And folks, sad to say, there are many Baptist churches who believe this, what I'm about to tell you. But mostly, if you see a church with the word Reformed in the title, they're Calvinists. Reformed Presbyterian, usually you see that. But I've seen Reformed Baptist, and I've seen even some churches that don't even identify with the word Reformed, but they are Reformed in their doctrine. And what it is, is Calvinism is this. 
that God has already predestined who will be saved and who will not be saved. So it's almost like no matter what you do in life, God has already predestined you to go to heaven, but predestined them to go to hell. Well, I can't believe that. There's no way I can believe it. And it's a belief called the tulip. And I don't have all that in front of me right now, but, but it, it's a tulip belief. And that's the basic belief of Calvinism. It all has to do with Romans chapter number 8 that in predestination and where you find the, the words elect or election in the Bible. Now, by the way, when you see the word elect or election in the word of God, that's always speaking of Israel. That's God's chosen people, right? That, that's, we, we as Gentiles, we are grafted in to the tree, the, is, is the, the children of Israel. They're the tree. And we as Gentiles, we've been grafted into the tree. We've not overtaken the tree. God's not finished with Israel. God had a covenant with Abraham. That's why the Bible didn't mention here that Christ being uh, him the seed of Abraham. Uh, God had a covenant with Abraham. And if you truly believe tonight that you can't lose your salvation because of the covenant of God, why would we think that God would go back on His covenant with Abraham? Well, it's not true. Now, that's not to say that, that God's not going to chastise Israel, right? Right? God's not going to... That's not to say God's not going to deal with them as children, uh, and we've seen that throughout history, what Israel has been, has been through and what they will be continuing to go through. Uh, and, and, and again, that, that Calvinism is this, that, that, that God has already predestined who will be in heaven and who will not be in heaven. Well, I, 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 can't, I can't believe that. Because, again, in verse number 14 of Hebrews 2, and it says that through death he might destroy him that have the power of death, and that is the devil. See, he, he delivered man by dying for all mankind. For God so loved the world. It's right here in John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Romans 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 Peter 2, verse 24, Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you are healed. And then again in 1 Peter 3, verse number 18, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, uh, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Listen, he died for all mankind. The words whosoever is still in the Bible. Now the Calvinists have gotten very clever with that word whosoever. They believe this, that when you see the word whosoever, or you see the word all, or you see here uh, that we or us, as, it's, as we, I just mentioned in these verses, they think that is them. So the whosoever simply means all the Calvinists. The whosoever simply means all those that he's already predestined. The whosoever means all those that are already going to heaven. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the Calvinist. Nobody else. And then the us and the all, that's... And, and so here's how they explain it to me, which makes no sense to me because it, it, it makes no sense to the Bible. But they explain it like this. There's a door, and on that door it says whosoever. And when you walk through the door, on the other side, it says predestined. So they're basically saying all those that are predestined are the whosoever. Well, I don't know about you, but in my English language, that means whoever. Right? That means whoever can, whoever will, and whoever wants to. Amen? And uh, again, I can never be a Calvinist because the Bible doesn't teach on Calvinism. And then also there's another belief on the opposite end of that, that you can lose your salvation, right? And in many churches they'll preach that. Uh, that's called Arminianism. 
And, uh, I, I, and I can't believe that either because when I look at the Word of God, it says thou shalt have everlasting life and never perish, right? Well, that's a guarantee, isn't it? And, and that no man shall pluck thee out of my hand. And, and then I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And again, here, here as well, if, you're, if you believe that you're saved and then you lose your salvation... Or here's another, another belief, or you forfeit your salvation, or what I've heard recently, or you divorce God. You know, it's getting sillier and sillier. But any, any of those, if yet one time, you think about it, if yet one time you had a relationship with God and then you said, I don't want to have a relationship with you, I don't want, I don't want to know you, I'm done with you, I forfeit my salvation, I divorce you, then how can God rightfully say when you stand before Him, I never knew thee? Do you think he knew you when you were saved? And then you're not saved. And then you stand before him that we see in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 and 22, that many will say in those days, Lord, Lord, did we not do these wonderful works in your, in your name? Did we not cast out devils in your name? And he's going to profess to them, I never knew thee. Depart from me. How can God that cannot lie rightfully say he never knew you? Well, key thing is, he probably did never know. You were never saved in the first place. A man will not forfeit or give up his salvation. And again, so I had a, I had a preacher in, uh, in Ireland. He said to me, he said, he said, well, if you're not a Calvinist, you must be an Arminian. I said, I I'm neither. He goes, you can't. You have to be one or the other. I said, no, it's simple. Uh, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When you get saved, you're sealed under the day of redemption. What's hard about that? I'm thankful for that, right? I'm thankful that He came and He died for all mankind. And that when He died for all mankind, He washed us in His blood. And through His blood, there's the remission of sin. And through His blood, we are sealed by the Holy Ghost of God unto that day of redemption. What's that day of redemption? That's when we stand before Him. When we are called by the redeemed. He died for all mankind. And here's one thing I always find interesting. You know, when you find yourself in one of those Calvinist churches or Reformed churches, it's always those that have money who are chosen. Right? That's what I've noticed. It's always those who are of some prestige or of some pillar of the community. Oh, they're, they're, they're predestined. Yeah, you're welcome to come to the church. But you know, you over there that are sitting on the street corner with a bottle in your hand, you, you, there ain't no way God's chosen you. Well, that's what they say. You over there has got a problem with drugs, or you over there has got a, uh, that, that, that's got marital problems, and, and you don't have a, a lot of money. You don't have a lot of influence. There's no way God's chosen you. That's who Jesus went to, by the way. Hello. I mean, there, the Bible's full of murderers. Moses was a murderer. David was a murderer. Huh? There, the Bible's full of adulterers in the Bible. And that's who God went to, right? Here was a man after God's own heart, David, who knew he did wrong, but yet he knew how to get right with God. That's why he was a man after God's own heart. Amen? So he came for all mankind. Let her see. Let me move on. He destroyed the devil's power over sin and death. In the last part of verse number 14, it says here, And through death he might destroy him that hath the power of death. And that's the devil. In John 12, verse 31 through 32, Here's what the Bible says. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, he said, I will draw all men unto me. In Colossians 1, verse 13 through verse number 14, 
who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath, the Bible says, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. And Colossians 2 verse 14 and 15, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailed it to his cross, the Bible says, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphantly over them in it. 1 John 3, verse 3, 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning, for his, pur for, for his purpose the Son of God was manifest. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, that He might destroy the works of the devil. Amen? Letter D. He delivered men from the fear of death. Did you hear that? I think it was my phone. Anyways, <laughs> it was a little bit of a chatter going on. I think it was the phone interfering with the... Anyways, all right. So letter D, he delivered men from the fear of death. Verse number 15. And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Matthew 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul. Let me tell you something. They can, they can take your life. They ain't going to take your salvation. Amen. They can take your life. So the Bible says again, fear them, fear not them which kill the body, but, but, but not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body, both soul and body in hell. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51 through 54 Behold, I show you a mystery, Paul says, which shall which uh, we which uh, we shall not all sleep. That means uh, you know die, go go by the way of the grave, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immorality Im immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall he and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up unto up in victory and then second timothy 1 verse 10 but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Amen. Letter E. He delivered man from the bondage of the flesh. Verse 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. So he delivered man from the bondage of the flesh. Philippians 3, verse number 3, For we are, we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. You can't have confidence in this flesh. Amen. Colossians 2, verse 10 through 12, And ye are complete in Him, which is the head of all principalities and power in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcisions made without hands, in putting off the body of the sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with Him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with Him through faith of the operation of God, who hath raised Him from the dead. That's the death, the burial, and the resurrection. That's the gospel. Amen? All right. I'm going to finish up tonight. Point number two. Point number two, Christ became man's great high priest. We talked about that this morning, didn't we? After the order of Melchizedek. Verse 17 and 18, the Bible says, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, 
that he might be a merciful and a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sin of the people, for in that he himself hath suffered being tempted. He is able to succor them that are tempted. Four things here tonight, real quick, letter A. He became the high priest, the great high priest. Why? So that he could be merciful to man. Verse 17 says, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Lamentations 3, verse 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, because his compassion fell not. Here's the song. His compassion fell not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. That's where the songwriter got the song. Amen. And then Luke 6, verse 36. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. You see, he became the high priest, great high priest so that he could be merciful to man. Let her be. He became the great high priest so that he could be faithful to God. Again, verse 17, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the things pertaining to God. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 9, God is faithful by whom you you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 1 Peter 4, verse 19, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their soul to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. He's faithful. Amen. Aren't you glad He's faithful tonight? We ought to rejoice that He's faithful. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He was faithful to wake us up this morning. Amen. He was faithful to get us to church. Amen. Amen. I mean, I'm telling you, there, I don't know how, how everyone's day went this morning or today, but I bet you it, it, it was hard, wasn't it? There were some things that got in your way, right? Huh? I know. There were some things. Maybe, maybe, maybe the old flesh said, oh, I don't feel like going tonight. I'm tired. Right? Well, I had a busy day, preacher. You know, I had to run errands today. I had to go grocery shopping today. Hey, today's payday, man. I had to go get some things done, right? I'm tired. I'll just stay home tonight. Right? Maybe your favorite episode's on. I don't know. I don't know what comes on Wednesday night. I don't watch. Listen, and, and I don't watch channel. What, what do we have here? To, channel 3, right? And the channel 10, channel 13. I don't know. One CBS, NBC, ABC, okay? 43 is Fox, right? And then I don't watch that CW. That's some weird stuff on there. I'm just going to tell y'all. That vampire stuff and that Lucifer stuff, give me a break. That ain't for me. Or the sci-fi, I'm not a sci-fi guy. Star Trek, look, I'm not a Trekkie. Don't look at me weird. I see you in my side eye. Look, I'm not a Trekkie. I'm not a Star Wars fan, okay? I, I, I Look, look, y- y'all, y'all don't get mad at me. I was in the back of an Econoline van in 1981 with shag carpet in a drive through watching Star Wars. So, look, 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 I come from the original Star Wars, okay? So I remember those days, but I, I'm, I'm not into the sci-fi. I'm not into the whole Twilight thing or... Or, or I, I'm not into Harry Potter. I'm not into uh, Lord of the Rings. They just don't interest me, right? So I don't watch. I don't know what's on TV. I don't watch ABC, NBC, CBS because it's a bunch of garbage. I'm just going to tell you, it's garbage. So what? Maybe it's something on TV. Y'all say, well, I'm going to stay in tonight, so I'll just stay home. Maybe you got in a fight with each other, huh? I'm not pointing any fingers, y'all. <laughs> y'all be saying, y'all, you're talking to somebody. No, no, this is the Lord speaking. Maybe you got to fight with each other. Hey, you know why I say that? You know why the Lord says that? Because we all do. Huh? <laughs> Listen, there, there's been, if, if, if the seats and, and the walls inside my car can talk, they're going to tell you what happens before we pull into a church van or we pull into a church parking lot, right? They're going to tell you, right, in your homes. 
Get, just get in the car. We're going to church. <laughs> well, sure sounds like we are, right? Hey, look, y'all laugh because you know it's right. Amen, amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he walked into the church. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Whoop, and you're walking in like you're floating. God is faithful. Amen. He got you to church. Let her see. Let's move on. Amen. Some of y'all like, thank you. He became the high priest, great high priest, so that he could make reconciliation for the sin of the people. Amen. Again, verse number 17, to make reconciliation for the sin of the people, the Bible says. 1 John 4, verse 10, herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Let me, let me tell you something. I heard, I heard Adrian Rogers, that, that joker, he is smart, I'm telling you. And this was like 1970-something message I was listening to. And I listened to it on the radio on the way, way to church on Tuesday. And it was such a profound thought, I went, wow. Right? He said, I'm telling the church tonight that the Bible says God is love. But love is not God. He said that the homosexual crowd, and, and, and you know, I'm talking, this was this before I was born, he was preaching this. He said all of that crowd, the women's liberal movement, all of that crowd says that we need to love. Love wins, and love has become their God. And then they try to use the Bible against the Christian by saying, well, isn't God love? Yeah, God is love, but love is not God. Amen? They make, you know, uh, uh, God is knowledge, but knowledge is not God. God is wisdom, but wisdom is not God. Because we've made those things the gods in our life. Amen? And the Bible says again here, herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us. And sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sin. Letter D, and I'm done. He became the great high priest so that he could secure. There you go, brother. It's okay to say it at this point, okay? Secure. Amen. He secured those who are tempted. Y'all get that in a minute. Amen. Verse number 18, and I'm done. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. Amen. That means secure. Hebrews 4, verse 15 and 16, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now, let me show you something tonight here. That word boldly. That doesn't mean you come with a chip on your shoulder. See, that word boldly is this, because before this, see, the high priest at the time, before Christ, and here again, Paul is, is writing to the first generation converted Jews. And at the time, they were still uh, uh, performing sacrifices at the temple because the temple had not been destroyed until about 30, 40 to 30 years after this. So, so the high priest, before he would go into the presence of God, before he would go into the holies of holies, he was, he, there was fear and trembling within him. Because he himself had to make sure he was 100% right with God. If he was not 100% right with God and did not go through the motions properly and right, and he did not give a lamb that, had spot, that, that did not have a spot, or maybe he gave a lamb with a broken bone, or something was not right, the Bible says that he would die. Aaron's two sons, same thing happened to them. So when they went into the presence of God, it was not boldly. It was fear and trembling. But the Bible is saying here, because of Christ being the great high priest, 
that we can now boldly, we can now openly, we have now access without going through the rituals, without going through the religious motion to be in the presence of God and that through Jesus Christ. Isn't that a joy? That's a joy tonight. And listen, all of that is simply this, that Christ secures the victory for man. Amen? Amen. All hearts and minds clear? Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this security that we have. We have the victory, Lord. And it is, it is already written. It's, it's finalized. And we're thankful for that. We do pray tonight as we go our several ways, Lord. You bless us. And I pray tonight, Lord, as we walk away from here, may we know we met with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much.